Hello everybody, Devin Martinez here, Product Manager for Trimble Geospatial Software. Today we're going to demonstrate a workflow utilizing our new Floor Flatness Floor Levelness tool released with Trimble RealWorks version 10.4. A bit of background about this project. A local contractor had just poured a concrete slab. Based on their contract, they were required to perform a floor flatness, floor levelness test. This test was performed by a third party. Today we're going to demonstrate how to square up the cloud using the RealWorks orientation tool, clean up the cloud using the sampling and segmentation tools, and finally perform a floor flatness, floor levelness analysis and create a report that will fulfill the GC's contractual obligations. In the field, we used a TX-8 scanner and we scanned four times to cover the floor space in question. For improved registration results, I will generally only level the most central scan and then disable compensator for the rest of the scans. This allows for the unleveled scans to have six degrees of freedom during the registration process. As you can see in the list pane on the left side of the screen, a leveled scan will be denoted by a blue folder. As you can see, I have sampled the TZF scans and fully registered this point cloud before this demonstration. For more information on those processes, please see the link in the description below. We will start by squaring up our point cloud relative to the XY coordinate system. The orientation tool can be found in the registration tab. Select the orientation tool. Within the orientation tool, we will define a horizontal axis by picking two points. This tool will define the X axis. I'm going to select two points along the longest leg of available point cloud data. After I select my second point, the cloud moves and I like to verify that I'm square with the gridded background. To permanently apply the transformation, click the green check mark and exit the tool. Now that we've squared up our cloud, we're going to begin the cloud cleanup process such that we're left with a completely clean floor to perform our floor flatness, floor levelness analysis. In most practical cases, a test area is generally completely cleared before scanning. But in our case, the test area was occupied with workers. Begin by placing real works into production mode. Notice by default, our project cloud is off. We will turn it on by simply clicking the light bulb in the list pane. I understand many people may prefer to use the segmentation and sampling tools inside the edit tab. But today, I'm going to use those tools directly inside of our floor flatness analysis tool. We'll start by pressing the inspection tab, clicking our floor flatness floor analysis tool. And from here, you can find our quick access segmentation and sampling tools. We'll start by selecting the segmentation tool to clip away all the unwanted point cloud data. Fencing in the area of interest. To close out the loop, we'll double click and select the check mark to keep point cloud data in. In the view tab, we'll go to the preset left view. Again, clipping away the unwanted data. Double click and keep point cloud data out. Exit the tool. And now you can see that we're getting close to having a completely clean floor. We've got a few columns left in place. For the final step in the cleanup process, we will select the sampling tool and use the floor extraction indoor tool to clean up the columns and the noise. Let's select show outliers and extract. And what this is doing is identifying all of the point cloud data that is not considered to be floor. And here you see it all highlighted in red. 
we'll select Keep Floor, and this will remove all the unwanted points in red. All we're left with is a clean floor surface. A clean floor surface is very important because any outliers will skew analysis results. Select Apply to return to the Floor Flatness Analysis tool. Now that we've cleaned our floor surface, we are ready to begin the floor flatness analysis. First, we will need to define our test area. Start by selecting Define. We are then prompted to begin drawing our test area. Start by selecting your first point. Notice the red line. The red line denotes that we are not able to draw a line that short based on the ASTM standards. It will turn green when the line is at appropriate length. After selecting our second point, we'll drag the box to the appropriate size. Again, it will turn green when we are at appropriate length based on ASTM standards. After our test area is defined, in the workspace, if we scroll to the bottom here, we can take a look at the minimum number of readings that we'll need. As many of you know, a reading will be taken every 12 inches along our single run. Now we will begin drawing our test runs. Press the Add Sample button. Based on ASTM standards, the first run needs to be along the 45 of your test area. Immediately, we see floor flatness and floor levelness results of the run. To add another sample, we will select the Add Sample button. To meet ASTM standards, we will be locked into drawing perpendicular lines crossing our main center line. When our line is long enough per the ASTM standard, the line will turn green. We will continue to add evenly spaced samples until the test area is completely covered. You can press A as a shortcut to add samples. Once finished, we can scroll to the bottom of our work screen to review results. Here you can see the overall floor flatness and floor levelness, and the minimum floor flatness and floor levelness of the test area, along with their 90% confidence ranges. A screenshot will be provided in your report. It will be derived from your active view, so please orient your view to a desired location before proceeding. To create the report, select the report button. A quick reminder appears that the ASTM standards requires our samples to be uniformly distributed throughout our test area. Simply select yes and choose a file save destination. We are then prompted to enter our contract specifications. In our case, our floor flatness SOV was 30. Our floor levelness SOV was 20. Our MLV for floor flatness was 18. And floor flatness SOV was 12. Select Create, and a Word document is generated with our test results. At the top of this document, we are provided with project-specific details. As we scroll down, we start to see contract specifications. This is what we just punched in in the last screen. Our test section area, along with the minimum number of readings and the readings we took. A screenshot of our test area. And here is where we will find the overall floor flatness and floor levelness results for our analysis. As we continue to scroll through our report, we will find individual results for each sample. And in our case, it looks like our floor is passed with flying colors. Again, this is Devin Martinez, and I sincerely thank you for joining us today for our floor flatness and floor levelness analysis demonstration.